Greetings, I'm Demonac, and it's arena time. So, I did not have an especially good draw last time, and the enemy priest was extremely solid. But I'm in the loser's bracket now, and you'd think that my still, so, like, incredible luck in the random part of the getting cards for the arena, my incredible, like, the rows that I got there, should be able to get me a bunch of wins, you would think. All this sick stuff. It's not a great draw, but I feel like in the mid game, I should have been able to do better. Stupid priest. Okay, well, these guys are not really the early game stuff I need. I do not have enough, like, three cost minions in here. I don't have that many two cost ones. All my two cost ones are kind of guys that are better later on. So there, whoever I play for two mana is always going to feel like a waste. Here we've got the Mortal Strike, which is another late game card. My deck has a lot of late game cards. The problem is it needs to actually win the late game. If I had, if I'd had one of my other legends last game instead of Alexstrasza, given how early I drew her, I think I could have done a lot better. But it would have been rough. But yeah, this deck. If I could have traded any one of my epic cards that I got for Gorhal, this deck would actually just be the most insane, like, Arena Warrior deck, which has been crazy. Alright, what have you got? Oh, one mana. There we go. We got a slow player appears. Can't imagine that he has that many choices for his first turn. And he's got a zombie chow. That's gonna hurt because I don't have very good guys for fighting that right now. You could play him and turn it into a four two. Which he can technically kill, but I have this feeling it would not be good. If I wait, though, it's actually going to get worse. Such a stupid play. What if my opponent has some way to just heal him? Like, even if he just gets a healing totem, that would totally mess me up. But again, I have a slow hand. I don't have any threes I can count on to play next turn. If I had any of my three cost guys, they would probably be what? fine for smashing no. that. Damn. Well, this is a pretty dumb move. I could do that. I could just armor up and it would just, like, waste time. But I don't like my opponent establishing an even greater board presence. Oh, I'm just going to do that. This is too painful. Giving him a 4 2 there and then seeing and then assuming that I'm going to be able to kill it with my nothing else that would help me kill it. There's the board control. That's not helping. Boy. If he had come, if this row had come later on, I think I would have taken one of the other guys for sure. I don't remember what else is in that row. I don't think it was that great, but yeah. Um, so he's going to get killed by this, but I think at this point it's worth playing him to kill the 2-1. It works. And yeah, this will kill him, and it's not great, but at that point I should be able to start playing things, which will be a plus. So, what's your devious plan? Flame tongue hit me for six. Hmm. Could happen. I have no idea. Seems likely that this guy would kill that. I mean, I'm at full health, so his doing a little extra damage is not too likely to matter, since there's a good chance that he would die and mm. heal me for five at some point. But if he can keep the board control, that's what he's for. It's that's not good. Well, I could blow him up, but yeah, it's kind of excessive. Now, we're just going to... I don't know if I want to do that. Killing him isn't that high a priority, really. 
Uh, there's nothing worth silencing, so it's still he's the best guy to put out. Unless I did want to just mortal strike that guy and leave the Once junky now. stuff on the board there. Maybe. Actually, that, that ogre's probably going to cause me a lot of trouble. Let's just blow him up. Because I can. My life total is going to go down fast if he's out there, and not too fast from just this stuff. Unless, of course, a flame tongue comes out, but then I can silence it. The interesting thing is going to be whether it's worth playing him next turn. I kind of need to stalemate things long enough to start just putting out big fat stuff every turn. But I'm not sure. I think I have too many fours, and it's really expensive to put out. It, you're so late game by the time you can play two fours in a turn. It's really rough. Whereas the three cost stuff, you can start playing like a three and a two, and then two threes. It's not that far out. Oh, this is going to get healed. Really? Uh. All right, well, I think it's time to send him out and just kill it. I think this guy is just not going to work out for me right now. For the king! For honor. He heals me most of the five life, but it also prevents him from healing up further. And these guys, barring Flame Tongue, would take a lot of work to kill him. Because they don't benefit from the healing totem. Until my opponent plays crazy murloc stuff that boosts their health. That would be a significantly murloc-y deck. Okay, he's going to rock biter him and then hit me for four. That makes a lot of sense. I can fix anything. Uh, I get it. This army is going to become dangerous if he gets even a me even one mech to boost that guy. I'm already taking a bunch of damage from all these dudes. Uh, the charge. I could play this guy and charge him. Something tells me that's not the ultimate move. For eight mana, I could play this guy and charge him, which is actually kind of impressive. But what do I do in the meantime? Uh, I'm gonna assume the healing totem is less of a problem than I'm gonna I'm gonna silence one two guy. Armor up. I could have maybe played this just to draw the card, but it may come in handy later. This could go really bad though. If he bloodlusts, he could damn near kill me right now. So I really need to start killing off his guys. Very good sign if they're killing me instead. Good job, guys, trading and stuff. That's fine. Something needs tinkering? That's pretty rough, but so glad I silenced him. Could have been taking a lot. That helps. It would have been better earlier, but uh, I'll take it. Again, playing him when I'm not in a position to force action is unfortunate, but with a taunt to protect him, theoretically. There's a reasonable chance that he'll do okay. Then if my opponent can just like silence him and then 5-5 five, five, kill that guy, that's not good. Yeah, this is also not good. Although at least his attack will go up. Yeah, this is not good though. Bloodlust would have been much worse than this guy, though. I, I have done a really poor job of controlling his army. So Baron Geddon would be okay. He would kill this guy. Oh, no, he wouldn't. Okay, no, not so great. Taskmaster. So, I could play this guy and charge him to suicide and kill that, which is not the greatest. I could also charge him to kill that, and he'd still be alive, but at one health. Which is kind of dubious. Fortunately, I don't have enough mana to charge him and do this, which would be awesome.
Yeah. What now? Charge him and kill that. Is it worth it? Or would I be better off... I mean, it's a, it's a waste of the charge, but just use him to kill that. Reduce the army to a 4-2. A lot smaller. And not have to worry about his drawback. I mean, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have to worry about his drawback, but... Yeah, I should probably just suicide him. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be kidding me. Not try and get fancy. I'm taking a beating. Of course, still got lots of cards. Like I, I have not been staying ahead in the card advantage at all. Oh my god, these guys are insane. Again, particularly in the arena. God damn it, and he's got a taunt on him, so if I get a charge guy, I won't be able to kill him. Um, the Abomination is interesting. I could Alex draws in my opponent for 13 damage, but I would lose. So, we're going to have to try with this guy instead. I guess I could have played this to draw a card first and just sort of waste it, but... The thing is, he's not going to kill either of these two guys. Well... It might take one of the, it might take this guy to kill him. Then this guy's gonna hit me for ten, eleven, twelve. I'm so screwed. So screwed. I don't know if I'm gonna ever be in a position where my guys can attack. I think I might just need to do this to draw the card. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I probably I should have done it before casting him, obviously. Oh, Baron Geddon, that would have been nice, but no. Just armor up. Just try to survive the turn. So obviously, that thing makes my guys immune to like immune to dying on my turn. It doesn't. It's not going to help any now. Because my turn is over. But I I don't know how much chance I was going to get where I'd have guys alive who could attack. Oh, really bad. No, I'm I'm toast. No surviving. Not even close. Damn it. So I've got three legendaries, a fairly decent array of single target killing cards for a warrior, a whole lot of like fat three and four cost stuff, and I have zero wins and two losses. Like I might actually just strike out with all these legendaries. To be fair, I'm always drawing the wrong one first. I haven't had a chance to play any of them except Alex Straza, who is usually not what I need. Uh, Strasse is amazing. It's the reason I crafted her, but I'm always so far behind that even she's not going to help. Like, you have to have some kind of stuff on the board or be able to, or be clearing the board. If your opponent has board control, then healing yourself a little and giving yourself a big non-taunt minion is not going to do anything. And I, so far, have not been able to remotely control the board ever with this deck. Which seems pretty messed up, because I still have, like, there are a reasonable number of two and three cost guys in here. I'm trying to mulligan to get them. The mage isn't going to be that helpful either. So, this guy's are sort of late gamey, or sort of late gamey two cost guys. I'm going to pitch these anyway and hope I get some of my goddamn ogres so I can have, like, early game ogreage. Okay, well, this is an all-early game hand. If I can't stay alive in the early game with this, like... That was obviously screwed. Plus, you'd think it would give me a crappier opponent, given that I have, like, two losses now. This should be... If the matchmaking works the way it really ought to, this should be another person with zero wins, two losses. Who, I, who should get stomped by all my epics, I would think. I'm going to coin out the axe and kill that guy just so there are no like shenanigans. Because a mage could easily like play a couple couple spells on the second turn, have like a three three out there, hit me for a bunch of damage, and have other stuff. Uh. You're fireballing me for one. That is fine. You do that. I'm just gonna armor up. I don't want to waste this guy. He's he's there for killing something, especially against a mage who can just pay to, to to kill him. This guy's also there for killing something. Together, they can kill something big. 
Now, this guy, on the other hand, if there's nothing else on the board, like this early in the game, just getting a 2-4 for 3 is pretty good. Later in the game, I should generally be trying to set something up where fighting happens after I play him, like on the same turn, but... Okay. Oh, interesting. I could commanding shout, hit him. Now, my guy would be down to one hit point. The problem... Yeah, that's not... That's not even saving him. He could do that anyway. And the problem is he gets shot on her turn, so that's not going to work out. But... It's interesting. I could mortal strike him, like waste my mortal strike, and then attack him with the axe. I would take three damage, and I'd have spent a valuable card and half of a valuable card. But this guy would be up to four attack and able to hit for, hit with it right away. I'm starting to think that may be what I want. I mean, instead of the mortal strike, I could use the Kokoron Elite. It'd be really nice if he was going to survive or something. I hate that he just dies from that. But that would actually get my guy even more power. It'd be like... One, two, three. So you have five attack. I can save the moral strike. Yeah, I'm gonna save the moral strike for flexibility. Or why would I do that? Wait a second. No, I can't do it that way. Oh, okay, we'll just here we go. Attack! I attacked! It wasn't letting me like click him, so I went for the armor. <sighs> I hate the stupid timer. It's if I can click the thing and tell it to attack, just have it attack. I'm gonna lose this game because of five damage that she should have taken there. I totally had her taking five damage, but no. God damn it. That's ridiculous. Like she should have been down five, and then her using a fireball to kill that guy would have been acceptable because my guy would have gotten the damage that I earned from him. But no, I'm just getting gypped. Uh. Now I don't have a weapon for him. Awesome. Um. Can pop the bubble, do this, then I can't count on... No, nah, it's not going to work out very well. I'm mostly screwed. Be nice if this guy would not hit him. Chances of that are slim. If I pop the bubble first, then if he did hit him, at least they would both, like, they would both die, instead of this guy still having three health left. But if I don't hit him, then it would be pretty ugly. So, I don't even know. Oh, uh, whatever. Back to work. We smash you. Okay, so that's fine. Um, I'm going to play this guy now. Kind of not good. The Kokron Elite obviously is much more powerful in my hand there. Just bear in mind that my opponent should actually be 5 health lower. Because that's bullshit. I clicked the attack. They could have the timer start earlier. As long as they let me queue all my stuff with it, it starts earlier and end up at the same amount of time, but like give me that warning, but no. Okay, um I think it might be commanding shout time now. We gotta get rid of him. I'm gonna lose I'm gonna have a whole bunch of guys reduced to one health, but eh. Card. Look at that, boing. No problem. You okay, guys so were temporarily invincible and now easily shootable. Of course, if she just flame strikes, then I won't care. The, the, their health wouldn't have made a difference anyway. She's probably not going to flame strike because you can shoot him and then there's not much else to flame strike. Okay, we got a dude there. 
Put a charge. Let me get one of my good legendaries. That would be nice. So I'm wondering... I'm one mana away from Alex Straza. I think I'm actually going to adopt a slightly more, like... I'm going to just try and control the board for now. And then next turn, Alex Straza and knock her down to 15. So that that seems fine. So I'm going to play this guy, and I'm just going to trade these two for that. It seem like a waste. It leaves my opponent with not much stuff. I am going to nuke her for like 12 damage with this and get an 8-8 out of the deal. I'm at a I'm at above 30 health right now. And then when she's down to 15, I can also like Mortal Strike is based on my health, so it's not going to do the six. But yeah, I'm probably going to have to use it to kill him. I don't know. We're still gonna we're still gonna do the Alex Draz move because it's cool. I bring life. Don't think the Jews is gonna have a whole lot of effect. I'm just gonna hit her. Jews plus fire blast is not enough to kill him. Now if she can have a, kill him with a spell and then use him and the fire blast to kill Alex Draza, it's a little bit annoying. But I've got stuff. Blizzard also a little bit annoying. So you can shoot him. And you can kill Alex Draza. Okay. That is unfortunate. Really? Not killing her. Fascinating. Dr. Boom. Well, I can just hit her for seven. That's pretty good. On the other hand, what do I do if I just I play him and the ogre and armor up and then use him more as a finisher? I don't know. The thing is, if I charge him, that's going to be nine damage. She's only going to be one hit point more than I can mortal strike for. And the bombs might kill her. And they give me sort of protection against AoE. Let, let's, let's just do it. I was also thinking about I could charge one of these and hit that guy, and but th where their damage goes is so random, it might not work. This right here, when you see that in the arena, is it not like, what the hell? And you're like, I have a legendary who is only useful when paired with another legendary. Yeah, he's a 7-4 for 5, but like, there's a pirate that does that. You're going to die. That killed you. Now, I mean, the bombs are random 1 to 4, so that might have not killed her, but no, that was... She was pretty doomed. She was boomed. So, yay, I whipped out my incredibly epic BS and totally demoralizingly nuked one opponent. I'm still way down with only one win here. So, we're going to see if I can get my way back up to neutral with the deck that just went Alex Straza charge Dr. Boom. Next time. Please click the like button before it clicks you. And check out Tales from My D&D Campaign on youtube.com slash demonex.